Isn't it lovely to be sitting here under the trees tonight? Over the years, moving outside for the summer is something that I have always looked forward to, truly, each year. When we moved out here from New Jersey, one of then three-year-old Elon's requests was that we be near redwood trees. I'm not exactly sure now what got these beautiful giants onto his radar. This was a long time ago, after all. Perhaps it was reading about them and seeing pictures in one of his favorites, Good Night California. It's like Good Night Moon, but you know, about California. Uh, or singing about them in This Land is My Land. But he was really insistent that he get to see some redwoods when we moved to Northern California. Now, granted, we didn't go quite as extreme as Rabbi Prosnit and Aaron, but our first place in Sunnyvale had three lovely redwoods just outside our back window. Perfect. Mission accomplished. And I have to admit, growing up in Southern California, I was always struck by the majesty of the redwood trees whenever I'd come up north. I remember spending a weekend camping among the giant sequoias after college and being in awe of these massive ancient trees. Certainly this week, as forest fires rage across Canada, I've had trees on my mind. A while back, I learned something unique about redwood trees. They are not sustainable if they grow alone. The root system of redwood trees is actually quite shallow. Given the great height the mature tree attains, there is no tap root. That's the main root that just goes straight down into the, gro um, into the ground. And the other roots may reach no deeper than 6 to 12 feet. The major roots are about one inch in diameter, when they and they typically spread 50 to 80 feet in any direction. One way in which redwood trees are able to remain upright for millennia is by growing close to each other with other redwood trees, intermingling root systems. This idea of the interconnectedness of each tree really struck me, perhaps even more so than their size. I had never considered the way that these incredible trees actually needed each other for survival. That for a redwood, solitude meant an unsustainable future. So it is with us humans, too. Like the redwoods, we are more interconnected than we sometimes are willing to admit. This was certainly something that came into sharp focus during the pandemic. And we also need the support of others to thrive. In the book of Genesis, we read, Lo tov heyot ha'adam levado. It is not good for human beings to be alone. We find great strength and sustenance in the company we keep and the relationships we build. As humans, we need relationships. In our culture today, there is a high value placed on independence, our ability to fend for ourselves, to figure it out on our own, to be self-reliant. This isn't a new idea. Nearly 175 years ago, the great champion of self-reliance, Ralph Waldo Emerson, wrote that the great man is he who, in the midst of the crowd, keeps with perfect sweetness the independence of solitude. Granted, Emerson was trying to ensure that his readers not lose themselves in a culture of conformity, but we also should not turn our focus too far inward, lest we isolate ourselves from our community. Like the Redwoods, we need to be around other people and to interact with them in meaningful ways to be well and to thrive. Recent studies tell us that relationships create psychological space and safety so that we can explore and learn. When we feel safe and supported, we don't have to narrow in on survival tasks like responding to danger or finding our next meal. We are able to explore our world, which builds resources of, for times of stress and adversity. But these days, we are increasingly building community virtually, online rather than in person. There are fewer and fewer opportunities to build deep, meaningful relationships, to sit down face to face and talk more about just the weather, the stock market, or the movies. Developing these close relationships is not easy, though. It takes time. It takes work. It takes some trust and vulnerability. And it takes commitment. 
Jewish tradition is a little countercultural in this way. This is where your synagogue community here at Beth Am comes in. We see this as a place that provides many opportunities for people to engage with their community and build meaningful relationships. On Friday nights, we come together, yes, to pray, to lift up our voices in song together. But more than that, we come to find comfort and to be a source of comfort, to celebrate new life and to memorialize those whom we have lost. Throughout the week, there are opportunities to study Torah together, to wrestle with its meaning, to debate with each other, to, to challenge each other, to think in new ways. As summer approaches, I'd like to challenge all of us here tonight to try something new over the next few months. Strike up a conversation with someone you don't know, ideally after services are over, but if you need to <laughs> do it right now, I'll, let you, I'll give you a pass just this once. Maybe come to Torah study or our Torah minion on Shabbat morning or Talmud study on Thursdays at noon. Volunteer at Hope's Corner or the Mountain View Community Services Agency. Attend a Beth Am Men or Beth Am Women event. There are many places here for us to come together. The challenge for us will be to create the space in our, in our busy lives to try something new. Sometimes that act of just getting something on the calendar is the hardest part. Just like it's good for us to get out into nature and breathe fresh, leaf-filtered air, it's good for us to be in community. It's good for us to do good. As we read in Psalm 92, our psalm for Shabbat, Tzadik katamar yifrach ke'erez balvanon yiske. Let justice doers sprout up tall as palm trees, as strong as fragrant cedars in the Lebanon. Planted firmly in God's house, their sweet blossoms will crowd out the bitter from the courts where God is found. However old they grow, they will still bring forth lush fruit. They will forever chant their tales of God's uprightness. To my flawless rock, they will sing and sing and sing. As we sit outside under the trees tonight and sing, the wind through the leaves and blending of our voices soothes our souls as we breathe in the fresh air of possibility as summer approaches. It's so lovely to sit here under the trees tonight. But if we bring our gaze down from the treetops, I know the hummingbirds are cute, but put down here, <laughs> and look around at the people surrounding us, isn't it incredible that all of us are here together tonight as a kehila kedosha, a holy community, here to support each other as we grow taller together. Shabbat shalom.